Hi, I'm Matt Thompson with the Estes Group, and I want to welcome you here to the Epicor 10 Out of the Box Tool Series. And what I want to really talk about is getting back to the fundamentals. We walk into a lot of clients, and the biggest problem that they have is they just try to get too cute with things. And oftentimes they then forget about the fundamentals. Think about any sports team you've ever been on, and when they get out of whack and they start losing, what's the one thing the coach always does? They bring them right back to the fundamentals. So we're going to talk about several different features through this video series, and I sure hope you watch all of them because there's always a little takeaway from each one. The first one's going to be planning and scheduling. So in there we're going to talk about time phase and how to read it. And that's basically the nuts and bolts of Epicor 10 and how it operates. If you understand the time phase report, you understand how the software really works. We're going to talk about the production planner workbench, and this is like a little hidden tool that most people don't even know exists, but this is how you know what's ready to actually start on your production floor. Makes life easy for your release schedules. Quick job, you know, it's not necessarily just for launching a quick job. It can be a testing tool and many other features, and I talk about those. What's in the planning workbench? How do I deal with manufacturer or configure to order types of jobs where I don't want to wait for MRP to pick that up? Planning workbench deals with that stuff real time. Job manager, so if you've got complex things you need to do, merging jobs, splitting jobs, all that fun stuff. Uh, change impact informer, so now we're getting into scheduling and what happens if I start playing around with a what if version of my schedule? I want to know what the net change is. Is it positive or negative? Well, there's tools like the Change Impact Informer that will show me exactly what I'm doing to my production system as well as what I'm doing to my resources and my overtime load that I might need. In addition, we're going to talk about material movement. So how do we deal with the manufacturing execution system queue? In other words, how do I queue things up to be able to say that an operator out on the floor can plug in a request for material to come to his saw or his operation, and then a material handler can go and grab that and bring that right back to him? What inventory movement needs to look like? How can we simplify that process and how can we keep track of it every time we touch something? In addition, how are we going to then work with staging inventory for production? So a lot of folks will do this visual process where they have to bring everything over to this staging area. And if you deal with big product, that can be a real headache for floor space. Or even just having to move and touch material multiple times, that introduces risk. You can always drop something, damage it every time you move it. And then on top of that, how do we work through the receiving processing to make life easy there as well? Case management is another tool that people just seem to neglect out of Epicor. People look at it and they say, eh, it's just help desk software. What do I really want to do with that? Well, for one, yeah, it is help desk software, but it does so much more. You can use this for all of your internal cues and conversations around things that the business needs to work on. So for example, if I need to send marketing materials to a potential customer or out to a trade show, I can enter a case for that. And from that case, I can launch the transactions with just a couple of clicks that take care of everything I need to do. In addition though, the traditional use, if I need a case to be able to be generated against a serial number for a customer owned product, I can plug that in and from one click, I can actually issue an RMA with that number and the product all associated and give it to that customer real time on the phone. And I never left the case entry screen. So there's a lot of power that's there and available and we can show you guys all of those details and in the video, it actually talks about a lot of that. Quoting and out of the box tools. So what can we do with quoting to make life easier? This is the number one thing that usually becomes a throwaway transaction for almost every company out there. What do you quote and what's your win percentage? You know, a good customer might win 30% of their quotes, maybe 50%, but that's getting up there. That means over half of the transactions you're doing out of quoting are just gonna be throwaway. So what do we want to do? How do we want to capture that information and make it as quick and painless as possible so it still feeds the rest of the business for all those wins, but doesn't crush your front end in making everything too long in the cycle so that you can't efficiently get quotes out to your customers. And that can become a competitive disadvantage if you get too slow in this process. And the final piece that we talk about here is the, the idea of tablets. Mobile products are here to stay. How do we use them? They can be used in the field. They can be used on the shop floor. You know, those Intermex scanners that cost about 1800 bucks, how would you like to be able to reduce that down to about $600 by using a tablet, which has a bigger screen and a much more friendly interface than dealing with something like that? 
and it can have a barcode that then's attached to your, your fork truck. And I can be within 30 feet of it with a custom inputable dashboard and be able to do all of my material movements without even having to interact with my ERP system because I'm just scanning and it's doing all that work for me. That's where systems are going. That's what we're seeing in businesses that are actually engaging and getting to the point where they're that efficient. So engage in that conversation. Make sure you join the video series. I can't wait to show you all these cool tools. But on top of that, I want to hear how you're doing things. So make sure you go out to Facebook and hit me up on facebook.com slash Estes Group. Our Twitter handle is at Estes Group and linkedin.com slash company slash Estes Group. And I monitor all those things. So by all means, please ask the questions. Tell me how you're doing things. I'd love to hear from you. And on top of that, make sure you connect directly with me. My LinkedIn profile is right there listed. So I'd love to hear from you and how you guys are doing things.